Thanks for joining me in the History of Science collections of the University of Oklahoma Libraries. Let's look at a couple treasures from the vault that throw light on the story of science in the 14th century. This book contains lectures by John Dunn Scotus, delivered in Oxford in 1302, printed much later in 1481. The rear wooden board bears a brand burned into the surface to identify it as belonging to the library of the Franciscans of Villingen near Strasbourg. It contains extensive annotations. Scotus, along with other 14th century theologians and philosophers, such as William Ockham, John Buridan, and Nicola Rem, mounted a sustained critique of Thomas Aquinas' synthesis of science and faith, arguing that divine omnipotence required the created order to be contingent and therefore not completely transparent to rational demonstration. Pierre Duhaime, in these many volumes, and numerous more recent scholars, have shown that if nature is contingent, that is, if it might have been made otherwise than it is, then Aristotle's logic, physics, and cosmology would all have to be greatly revised to allow more than one possible outcome. In the hands of 14th century writers like these, a critique of rational necessity led to such ideas as the possible existence of other worlds, a rotating earth, and an earth characterized not by eternity, but by a very ancient history that might be reconstructed on the basis of empirical fossil evidence. One expression of this 14th century critique of rational necessity was an increasing role for experiment. If nature is contingent, then experimental methodologies will be essential to grasp the natural order. An example of a 14th century experimental tradition is the investigation into the optics of the rainbow by the monk Theodoric of Freiberg. Theodoric experimented with spherical flasks filled with water. Each flask modeled an individual raindrop in a cloud with the sunlight shining on the flask from a crack in the ceiling. He observed that different colors appeared as he would raise the flask higher or lower by covering certain portions of the flask at a time, one after another, to see where the light would come out, Theodoric determined the path that light follows from the sun as it passes through the drop to the human eye to create a rainbow. Theodoric's explanation of the primary and the secondary rainbow as a result of refraction and reflection is still regarded as correct. That is, the paths traced by the rays of light through raindrops to produce both the primary and secondary rainbows was confirmed by Descartes in the 17th century as printed in this work of Descartes. For this reason, Theodoric of Freiberg's discovery of the optics of the rainbow is often regarded as a triumph of experimental methodology in the late Middle Ages. Science is a story. What stories do you want to hear and tell about 14th century science?